Hey, what's good guys? I'm so excited. We've got about a week and some change here until we see the first beta of iOS 12. So iOS 12 beta one is gonna be dropping on Monday, June 4th. And in this video, I'd like to talk about the final basis. Everything you need to know before that happens. I've actually had so many questions that I thought, hey, I'll just put it all into one video so you guys know what's up. And there's also a couple new leaks regarding WWDC I wanted to talk about. So let's throw everything together in one video and uh, talk about iOS 12, everything you need to know. So I'm just gonna do a little mashup here and talk about everything related related to WWDC and iOS 12 beta one. So the first thing I wanted to mention is where do you watch it and how do you do it? And this year, Apple's doing something completely different with the streaming. Yes, they will be streaming it by the way they didn't stream their educational events. And of course, they're gonna be streaming WWDC. I mean, it would be a tragedy if they wouldn't. Now the requirements to watch this stream this year will be different. Previously, you'd have to use Safari on an Apple computer. This year, you don't have to do that anymore. You can watch it from any device as long as it supports the HTML5 video that Apple's gonna be streaming. So you can use Chrome, you can use any browser of choice on any device. And the link will be down below in the description. It starts at 10 a.m. on June 4th, Pacific Standard Time. So if you're Eastern, that's gonna be a little earlier for you, 7 a.m. It's the same time every year, so tune in for that. You don't wanna miss it. WWDC is always a great event to watch. Now, immediately after the event, Apple always drops the first beta of whatever software they are demoing. This year, it's gonna be iOS 12 alongside, you know, of course, the other ones, macOS 10.14. Then we've got watchOS 5, tvOS 12, HomePod iOS 12 version. And we might even see an updated version for the AirPods, who knows? I mean, Apple's doing software, so software for every device. And which devices will be supported? The rumor was that the iPhone 5S, the oldest device that currently supports iOS 11 right now, will be getting an iOS 12 upgrade. And that's kind of for Apple to fix everything that they broke with iOS 11 to leave that device off on a good note. To have it supported with faster firmware, maybe Apple will lighten the load of features, remove some features it doesn't need. But from this rumor, I'm guessing that if if Apple supports the iPhone 5S, they would do the very same thing to every other device. So my personal guess is that every single device that currently runs iOS 11 will also run iOS 12 if Apple is doing the slower, older device running the newest firmware strategy. I personally hope they do. I would love to see the iPhone 5S on a newer firmware, but this is a rumor. It's not confirmed. If it were to happen though, that would be great. So every device that currently runs iOS 11 has a very high chance of running iOS 12 as well. Now, will you be able to install iOS 12 beta one on June 4th? If you're a developer and you pay $100 to Apple for the membership fee, yes, you will. If not, yes, you still will, but it's gonna be through other methods. Usually there's a link for a profile that you can download and it's the same thing that you'd get from Apple. But the only thing that sucks about these profiles is that they can be modified and someone can inject other code into it. I showed you guys on this channel before there was a certain type of profile that would install a bunch of undeletable apps on your phone. So, you know, it's gonna be kind of sketchy. You wanna take care with that if you're gonna go that route. But if if you want to be legit and install the legit version of iOS 12 on day one, you're going to have to be a developer. If you want to do the public beta for the big releases, it usually takes up to like 20 days. Last year it took 21 days for the first public beta of iOS 11 to come out. And that was when iOS 11 developer beta two was out. So Apple wanted to make sure that all of the crazy big bugs got ironed out before it went out to the public for beta testing. So yes, you'll be able to install it. But the question now is, should you? And honestly, for a big number release like this going to iOS 12, even though yes, it is rumored to fix a bunch of stability issues, make your device more bearable, bug fixes, just an overall focus on performance, it still doesn't mean you should install it day one. I still remember and will always remember iOS 7. It was such a crazy release, the beta. I mean, there was so much hype for it and everyone was installing it left to right, but it was a disaster. I mean, the amount of issues you would have, the lagginess, the battery life destruction, it was terrible. It was a complete crap show. And even though iOS 12 probably will be better than that, I still would not recommend installing it on day one on your personal device. If you have an extra one that you want to test it out with, that's always an option, of course, to go in and explore all the new features, but you should never install it on your personal device. And it's not because the iOS is unstable, it's because of everything else it affects. For me, the worst thing about running a beta is how it affects my car stereo. It's like a gamble. You never know after installing it if the Bluetooth streaming is going to work, if it's going to work at all, if my car would be able to communicate with it. There's always so many bugs, it's really, really annoying. Not only that, you have all the lag, the random crashing, third-party apps aren't suited to work with the new version, so there's always some instability, incompatibility issues, and battery life gets nuked as well. So your device might go from lasting a full day to literally having to charge it like two to three times a day and overheating issues. So do take note, you'll probably be able to install iOS 12. It doesn't mean you should. And just a quick rundown of what we know about this firmware. So it's not supposed to be a huge firmware in comparison to the vastness of iOS 11. We got so much 
with iOS 11, actually a new control center, a overhaul of the looks in general, the lock screen. So there will be tweaks, optimizations, but its main directive, its main focus is to improve the usability of your phone. Apple pushed back a lot of features into 2019 with iOS 13, including a full redesign just to focus on the stability because the legendary bugs that Apple has in their firmware, they seriously can't go on with this image. So they're taking a year, a little chill year for developers to catch up, get all their features working and stable. So iOS 12 will not be huge, but it will still have a number of things. It'll have a huge focus on the iPads. They're supposed to get a lot of optimization tweaks. There will be cross-platform apps. So you'll be able to use iOS apps on your Mac and vice versa, possibly. They'll be optimized for both finger input and then mouse input. So you'll be able to go from one to the other easily. And that's gonna be a big focus with iOS 12. On the iPhone 10, there will be horizontal face ID support. So you'll be able to unlock it like this. And this is presumably for the iPhone 10 plus, which will have the split screen apps. So if you're using it in landscape and the phone locks and you wanna unlock it, you won't have to rotate your phone every single time to do so. There will be new emojis for the iPhone and new emojis in general with Unicode 11.0. So over 150 new ones, possibly reversible emojis as well. Deeper Siri search integration, primarily within photos. So she'll be able to search your stuff more clearly. I mean, typing in like car will reveal car more reliably and possibly even new subjects. There will be a do not disturb mode 2.0 with more options for filtering calls or automatically denying them. For the iPad, there will be a revamped interface for importing photos and AR will gain the ability for multiplayer support. So several iPhones in the same scene and setting, whether that's local or online, we don't know. And lastly, iBooks. Apple wants to make it a true competitor to Amazon and supposedly the name is gonna get changed back to just books or Apple Books in iOS 12. And of course, there's other software, the Watch OS, TV OS, possibly HomePod or AirPod improvements, but primarily Mac OS 10.14, of course, is gonna be a huge focus in this event. And there are some leaked trademark filings from a shell company that suggests the name of what the next version of Mac OS will be called. And those are Mojave, Sequoia, Ventura, or Sonoma. So one of those could possibly be the next name of Mac OS 10.14. And John Gruber of Daring Fireball says that his favorite feature he's looking forward to in Mac OS 10.14 is the redesigned app store. So supposedly it's gonna get a look just like iOS, the iPad and iOS version. And it's gonna be a little bit more friendly, a lot more featured content and bigger bubbles on the front page. So we'll see what happens there, but it definitely makes sense that they would do this because they're gonna to wanna to make sure that the app store is congruent between iOS and Mac OS if you're using the same apps between them. So it certainly makes sense that they'd have to look the same. And these just leaked by Best Buy. This is the Decade Edition Beats series. These weren't supposed to release until June 4th. You can see the release date says June 4th and that's a WWDC. So it's very likely that Apple was gonna announce them or just casually mention them and drop them that same day. But they leaked this early and it's actually kind of cool, nice little color scheme to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Beats headphones. Aside from that, it is very likely that we will be seeing some sort of new hardware. It's possible that the air power mats will make an appearance with an actual concrete release date at this event. The AirPods wireless charging case would be likely if that were to happen as well. And of course, it's very possible that we could see new MacBooks as well, a slight refresh. They won't be getting Canon Lake, the 10 nanometer process. Instead, it'll be a continuation of Coffee Lake and 14 nanometers. So that unfortunately means no support for 32 gigabyte DDR4 RAM. And also possible, but not very likely to happen at this event, the iPad Pro that's gonna be very similar to the iPhone 10 in usability. It'll be gesture based, no home button. It'll have face ID, more of an edge to edge display. And the iPhone SE 2 could make an appearance as well. Although these could get their own dedicated event at a later time. All right, so next I wanna show you this concept. And I know I'm sure you've already seen a ton of iOS 12 concepts. I personally am keeping my expectations low. So I don't even like looking at this kind of stuff just because I know I'm going to be disappointed anyways. But this one really struck a chord with me because it's so clean. It's definitely something Apple would do. Uh, the notifications right now, it's pretty much a joke in iOS, just how random they are and jumbled. And this cleans them up, brings them together, groups them. I think it looks really good. So something Apple certainly should look into if they haven't already. Next up from the developer Ramble, the guy that leaked a bunch of iPhone 10 stuff, he made some assumptions about what we're likely to see in iOS 11 from his point of view. Nothing too crazy, but basically iBooks getting a redesign. There will be a single sign-on solution for everything all in one place. Some new watch faces, a pride rainbow colored one possibly. A dark mode on Mac OS, huge tease for us on iOS, but uh, he thinks that it will happen on the Mac version. You'll be able to see how much time you're spending on iOS. And this is something that Android P just got with the digital
digital health dashboard. So I definitely do see Apple doing something with the health aspect as well. And then a lot of technical stuff. So those are the predictions from this developer. So there it is, what we know currently about WWDC. It's gonna be a very big event. There's a lot for Apple to talk about and we may not see hardware. It might just be a software event. I mean, that's what it's based on. But in the past, Apple has sometimes introduced hardware at this event as well. So I'm very excited, guys. We've got just a little bit over a week to go. So I'll see you guys here for that. But just wanted to make sure you're prepared for it. Do not install iOS 12 beta one unless you know exactly what you're getting into. Do it on a separate device, not your personal one. But it certainly will be fun to find all those little features here and there. Apple always sneaks some in. So I'm very excited for that. The hunt begins. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Peace.